So Hosanna has run and he's really very close to Nyala. There he is there and the Nyala's on the other side of the car. So there's the Nyala. You can see they're very close. Now the Nyala's seen something, whether it's going to react or has seen no there we go. The Nyala's gone. Hosanna, you're a bit too brave, my boy. You came out too much. You can see he's a bit confused now by all of this and is now sitting and just watching the Nyala run off. Sorry, boy. It was close, though. Well done. You got into a good position, at least. And you can see how he actually reacted using our vehicle, which is quite interesting. Uh, that's behavior that he must have learned already from Karula. That's how he knows that he must try and get behind some sort of object to be able to hunt. So very clever already. Well done. Now... I'm just trying to get rid of about 4 million buffalo thorn thorns that are in my steering wheel at the moment so that I don't get thorns in my hand because we went through some horrible thickets. I have probably a whole buffalo thorn branch in my back as well at the moment as I try to keep up with this little man as he moves around through this thicket. So I'm going to try and just get round again. Tulan, who's five years old. Tulan, you want to know, will Hosanna be in the naughty corner or be in trouble if he goes to where people live? Well, Tulan, here in this part of the world, no, because the, everybody here knows that we live around wildlife. Careful there, Senzo. We live around wildlife, and this is their home before it was our home. And so we know that these animals do walk around here, and we're aware of it. And if they come through, we just give them their space. And as you can see with Hosanna, is he didn't stay long. He kind of went through and looked around, sniffed around, and then he left. So it's not a big problem for him. He doesn't mind, and, and us as people, we don't mind if he's around. As long as he doesn't try and go into anywhere and try and hurt anybody, it's not a problem at all. If he starts to get a bit angry with the people and tries to chase them and eat them, then yes, he's going to be in a lot of trouble. But for now, he's not in any trouble whatsoever. Matthew, you're wondering if yelling would provoke a wild leopard if you encountered it. Matthew, most certainly it would. Um, leopards are animals that rely on their camouflage to be able to stay hidden. And so when you come along, there he goes, trotting up the mound. Are you going to sit there? Oh, look at this, guys. Look at that sunset and the silhouette of Hosanna on top. Isn't that just beautiful? Look at that. Wow, guys, that is so special. Now he's going to sit there. This is so cool. Hosanna, you are posing, my boy. That is amazing. So he's just sitting on top of the mound, taking it easy, gazing upon the sunset. Now, getting back to the question, in terms of yelling, if you did yell, you're going to make this animal a lot more wary of you and a lot more nervous, and that's not going to help you in any way whatsoever. So it's better not to be yelling. It's better to try and just hold your ground and to try and... Just walk back slowly, stay nice and silent, avoid eye contact, and that should be the best way to get yourself out of a problem when it comes to a leopard. But isn't this special, guys? How cool is this? Like I say, it's not every day you're going to get sunset. Absolutely special. That is the most amazing thing to see. Oh, and it was just a brief glimpse, and down he goes again. But that was so cool. It's like I say, just perfectly lined up with this termite mound to be able to see that. And I'm going to try and keep up. Mike is calling me on the radio as well, so I need to answer him so he can find us and be able to fit with us. Uh, Mike, if you copy me, you need to come from Chipper Dam Wall sides, uh, come through that crossing um, on the southern side of the dam wall, and then you'll, I'm just going now um, west in the block towards the cut line. No, Mike, you need to come south of uh, the dam wall. So come south as though you're going up towards uh, that open area of the airstrip. And then once I get your audio, I'll, I'll let you know. But you should see me from the road. 
There we go. We've got Mike on his way here, which is good news. So we've helped him. But this area that we're about to go through is going to be very difficult. To keep up with Hosanna through here is not easy. I've followed a few different leopards. This used to be a favorite of Tundi, Wabayiza, and even Safari, Karula's mom, used to spend a lot of time in this area. So I've done this for us. Now, Meg told me I need to, well, not need to, but that I can link away, but I didn't copy who. So either you're going to get Biceps Byron or you're going to get Petite Jamie. Either one, I'm sure you'll be happy to see.